Let's take a look at the learning objectives of this e-module, Lockout Tagout Part 1. At the end of the e-module, you will be able to understand what is Lockout Tagout, define hazardous energy, list the harmful effects of hazardous energy, describe what is Lockout Tagout, that is L-O-T-O, explain the need for L-O-T-O, describe the training on L-O-T-O procedures, Explain the lockout policy. Understand the general procedure and precautions that to be followed for LOTO. Define tagout. Explain the temporary energization. Explain the minor servicing procedures that needs to be followed in case of testing and troubleshooting. Let us start this module by defining what is lockout tagout. Lockout, tagout or LOTO or lock and tag is a safety procedure which is used in industry and research settings to ensure that dangerous machines are properly shut off and not able to be started up again prior to the completion of maintenance or servicing work. Hazardous energy sources need to be isolated and rendered inoperative before work is started on the equipment in question. The isolated power sources are then locked and a tag is placed on the lock identify the worker who has placed it. The worker then holds the key for the lock ensuring that only he or she can restart the machine. This prevents accidental startup of a machine while it is in a hazardous state or while a worker is in direct contact with it. Employee servicing or maintaining machines or equipment may be exposed to serious physical harm or death if hazardous energy is not properly controlled. Compliance with the lockout or tagout standard prevents an estimated 120 fatalities and 50,000 injuries each year. Workers injured on the job from exposure to hazardous energy lose an average of 24 workdays for recuperation. Well, so far, you have understood the importance of lockout tagout in the industry and research settings. Workers are injured on the job because of exposing to hazardous energy. Let us now learn what is hazardous energy. Energy sources including electrical, mechanical, hydraulic, pneumatic, chemical, thermal or other sources in machines and equipment can be hazardous to workers. During the servicing and maintenance of machines and equipment, the unexpected startup or release of stored energy can result in serious injury or death to workers. Hazardous energy, as mentioned before, could be in the stored form like steam lines or hot liquids, for example, hazardous chemicals in pipelines under pressure or force of gravity. Though chemicals may not seem like stored energy in the normal meaning of the word, but some chemicals like acids, would cause injury if suddenly sprayed or splashed on a worker who, thinking a pipeline is empty, disconnects a pipe or opens a valve. Stored mechanical movement means some part of a machine can be moved by electricity, hydraulic fluid, air pressure, water pressure or gravity. This energy can sometimes still exist or be stored when the machinery is turned off. For example, hydraulic fluids can move machinery parts even when the motor or electricity is off if a certain valve is opened. In the truck, the upraised bed has hazardous stored energy because gravity could move it down on top of a mechanic working under it if bed is not physically blocked in the up position. Active or stored energy sources that could harm a worker include live electrical lines, electrical capacitors, lasers, engines that move machinery parts, hydraulic lifts, pneumatic water lines, springs, etc. Other examples include forklifts with the forks in the up position, few lines such as natural gas to heaters. All these examples are considered hazardous because just turning them off does not guarantee they won't accidentally be turned on again during maintenance or repair or they continue to have stored energy after being turned off. Think of a compressed spring or a pressurized line that has not been bled off. For safety during maintenance, a machine or equipment needs to be in zero energy state. A machine or equipment is said to be in zero energy state when 
the machine is incapable of spontaneous or unexpected action. There is no residual energy left in the machine. Let us now look at the various types of energy. They are electrical energy, hydraulic energy, pneumatic energy, kinetic energy, potential energy. Power transmission lines, transformers and circuit breakers carry electrical energy. Fluid under pressure, cylinders and lift trucks will have hydraulic energy. Air under pressure, that is pipes, tanks and vessels have pneumatic energy. Moving conveyor, flywheel, moving saw blade possess kinetic energy. Spring, battery or elevated weights have potential energy. Let us now learn the harmful effects of hazardous energy. Workers servicing or maintaining machines or equipment may be seriously injured or killed if hazardous energy is not properly controlled. Injuries resulting from the failure to control hazardous energy during maintenance activities can be serious or fatal. Injuries may include electrocution, burns, crushing, cutting, lacerating, amputating or fracturing body parts and others. Examples of harmful effects of hazardous energy are A steam valve is automatically turned on, burning workers who are repairing a downstream connection in the piping. A jammed conveyor system suddenly releases, crushing a worker who is trying to clear the jam. Internal wiring on a piece of factory equipment electrically shorts, resulting in electrical shock to worker who is repairing the equipment. Lockout means cutting all sources of energy and installing a specific lock at the source that no one else can open to prevent the starting of this piece of machinery while it is being cleaned, maintained, adjusted or repaired. Or simply put, it is the use of a special locking system to prevent power from being accidentally turned on during repair or maintenance works. A lockout device is a device that utilizes a positive means such as a lock, either key or combination type to hold an energy isolating device in the safe position and prevent energizing of machinery or equipment. Included in this category are blank flanges and bolted slip blinds. Tagging or tag out is the placing or addition of a tag to the locking device which indicates the date, time and the name of the worker as well as a danger or warning sign not to start the machine. However, it is important to note that this never replaces a lock. Lockout and tagout put together are also known as LOTO. During normal operation, guards, cover plates, panels, etc. must be in place to protect employees from contacting, moving or dangerous parts of machines or equipment that could lead to entanglement, electric shock, amputation or laceration and pinching, pinning, crushing or other injury. However, it may be necessary to remove or deactivate guards during maintenance and repair operations. In these situations, a lockout, tagout, that is LO or TO program must be observed. Lockout, tagout is a systematic approach to minimizing the risk of injury resulting from the unexpected startup that is energization of a machine or equipment during servicing and repair. LOTO features should consist of following key elements. LOTO devices must be personal, that is, labeled to identify the name of the specific employee who is authorized to apply and remove it. LOTO devices must be unique or distinct and durable. LOTO devices can be used for no purpose other than controlling hazardous energy sources. LOTO devices used must be standardized according to color, shape or size. Devices must be able to withstand harsh environments and not easily removed, that is, require excessive force and special tools, for example, bolt cutters, etc. to defeat.
The LOTO system is required in all industries and research centers as this protects many employees and workers from physical harm and death caused by hazardous energies. The basic purposes of using LOTO in workplaces are as follows. LOTO maintains safe environment. It avoids injuries to technicians working on the site due to switching on the power line or machine by other staff. It provides for controlled maintenance or repair works. Individual technicians will have their lockout and tagout control to avoid others switching on. And finally, it is required by law. Let us now learn about the employer's responsibilities for LOTO approach. Though there is no specific mention mandating LOTO in any of the rules regulations in India, the Factory Act does provide for requirement of cutting off supplies. However, as a best practice, the employers must implement LOTO when employees are exposed to hazardous energy while servicing and maintaining equipment and machinery. Some of the most critical requirements are outlined below. Ensure that each machine has a means of isolating the energy source that is lockable in a location that is familiar to all employees and is properly identified. Provide a safety lock and key. Establish a written lockout procedure and adequately train employees. Ensure that no employee works on a machine until a competent person puts the machine in a zero energy state and the employee verifies zero energy state, locks out the machine using the safety lock and key provided. Adds a safety tag that contains a warning not to start the machine, the employee's name and signature, the date and time, tests that the machine is inoperative. Develop, implement and enforce an energy control program. Use lockout devices for equipment that can be logged out. Tagout devices may be used in lieu of lockout devices only if the tagout program provides employee protection equivalent to that provided through a lockout program. Ensure that new or overhauled equipment is capable of being logged out. Develop, implement and enforce an effective tagout program if machines or equipment are not capable of being logged out. Use only lockout or tagout devices authorized for the particular equipment or machinery and ensure that they are durable, standardized and substantial. Ensure that lockout tagout devices identify the individual users. Establish a policy that permits only the employee who applied a lockout tagout device to remove it. Inspect energy control procedures at least annually. Provide effective training as mandated for all employees covered by the standard. Comply with the additional energy control provisions in OSHA standards when machines or equipment must be tested or repositioned, when outside contractors work at the site in group lockout situations and during shift or personal changes. Failure to control hazardous energy accounts for nearly 10% of the serious accidents in many industries. Proper lockout tagout, that is LOTO practices and procedures safeguard workers from hazardous energy releases. All workers should be trained to ensure that they know, understand and are able to follow the applicable provisions of the hazardous energy control procedures in the following manner. Workers must be trained in the purpose and function of the energy control program and have the knowledge and skills required for the safe application, usage and removal of the energy control devices. All employees who work in an area where energy control procedures are utilized need to be instructed in the purpose and use of the energy control procedures, especially prohibition against attempting to restart or re-energize machines or other equipment that are locked or tagged out. All employees who are authorized to lock out machines or equipment and perform the service and maintenance operations need to be trained in recognition of applicable hazardous energy sources in the workplace, 
the type and magnitude of energy found in the workplace and the means and methods of isolating and or controlling the energy. Specific procedures and limitations relating to tag-out systems where they are allowed. Retraining of all employees to maintain proficiency or introduce new or changed control methods. The lockout policy is a statement that explains the company's directives concerning tagging and locking out procedures, outlining the where, when and why it is required. Let us now see where lockout should be used. Locks and tags are applied to all primary and secondary energy sources, gas, water and steam lines, HVAC equipment including air handlers and boilers, kitchen equipment such as slicers, mixers, dishwashers, trash compactors and garbage disposers, woodworking and metalworking machines, laboratory equipment such as centrifuges, autoclaves and high-power lasers, conveyors, motor vehicles, hydraulic lifts, elevators, etc. Let us now see when lockout should be used. All employees who operate, service, maintain or repair machines and equipment that are associated with any potentially hazardous energy source that is electrical, mechanical, hydraulic, pneumatic, chemical, thermal, gravity, radiation are subject to one or more elements of company's LOTO program. These include constructing, installing, setting up, adjusting, inspecting and repairing works. As a general rule, specific procedures must be documented for each piece of equipment subject to LOTO. These procedures must contain the following information. A specific statement of the intended use of the procedure. Specific procedural steps for shutting down, isolating, blocking and securing machines or equipment to control all sources of hazardous energy. Specific procedural steps for the placement, removal and transfer of LOTO devices and responsibility for the devices. Specific requirements for testing a machine or equipment to determine and verify the effectiveness of LOTO device and other energy control measures. Let us now see various steps to follow while writing LOTO procedures for any industries. Technician must be trained on lockout and tagout or LOTO procedures before they start handling the maintenance activities. All authorized and affected employees must complete LOTO training, consisting of both general training provided by EHS and supplemental specific training provided by the supervisor or delegate. Specific training by the supervisor must include site-specific equipment or machines and related LO or TO procedures. An affected employee is an employee whose job requires him or her to operate or use a machine or equipment on which servicing or maintenance is being performed under LO or TO or whose job requires him or her to work in an area in which such servicing or maintenance is being performed. Each affected employee shall be instructed in the purpose and use of the energy control procedure. An authorized employee is a person who locks out or tags out machines or equipment in order to perform servicing or maintenance on that machine or equipment. Each authorized employee shall receive training in the recognition of applicable hazardous energy sources, the type and magnitude of the energy available in the workplace and the methods and means necessary for energy isolation and control. All other employees whose work operations are or may be in an area where energy control procedures may be utilized shall be instructed about the procedure and about the prohibition relating to attempts to restart or re-energize machines or equipment which are locked out or tagged out. Site supervisor must be aware of the maintenance activities along with client's approval and obtain permission from his manager to lock out and tag out. Shut down the equipment as per approved procedure. Place locks and tags on the switches or valves 
that needs shut down during maintenance activities. Double check if the switch or valve still operates even after it is locked. Perform the maintenance or repair activity as per the plan. Make sure the technician changes their locks if the shift ends before the work is completed. The next shift technician must use his or her own locks. Once the work is completed, ensure all the locks and tags are removed. Switch on the machine or switch or valve for its operations. Let us now see what are the steps to follow if the LOTO extends beyond one shift. When a LOTO extends beyond one shift, there is a higher risk of accidents, often attributed to a lack of communication between affected and authorized employees of different shifts. Therefore, the following additional procedural steps are necessary. Authorized employees from both shifts should meet together at the logout, tagout device or devices. The incoming authorized employee should place their lock or tag on the energy isolating device. Before the exiting authorized employee going off shift removes their lock or tag, the oncoming authorized employee must then re-verify that all safety devices such as blocking are in place, stored energy has been relieved and that the system has been effectively locked. Incoming affected employees should also be alerted. Let us now see how to remove the LOTO device in case of absence of authorized employee. Each lockout or tagout device must be removed by the employee who applied the device. When the authorized employee is not available to remove it, their supervisor must contact EHS to document the occurrence and develop specific procedures that provide equivalent safety. Let us now see how to handle the situation if there is a group LOTO. In some cases, service or maintenance or repair of a particular machine or equipment may involve more than one person. In this case, a group LOTO procedure must be implemented. The process is similar to that described previously, but with a few nuances to account for the involvement of more than one person. Each authorized employee must utilize a personalized device. Each authorized employee must be afforded the opportunity to verify energy isolation and appropriate placement of energy isolation devices. One person must be designated with responsibility to coordinate all authorized employees involved in the process, including overseeing of proper implementation of LOTO procedures and key control. Let us see how to handle situation if the LOTO has been done by non-company personnel, contractors and other outside employees, for example, temporary workers, contract employees, etc., may be hired to operate or install a service company-owned machines or equipment. If a contract employee is hired to operate company-owned machines or equipment that may be subject to LOTO requirements, the hiring department is responsible to ensure that the contract employee completes all applicable training in the same manner and with the same content that would apply to a regular employee. The contract employee must follow company established procedures. If a contractor is hired to service or repair company owned machines or equipment that is subject to LOTO requirements, they must provide a copy of their LOTO procedures and a description of the LOTO devices that they will use to the hiring department. The hiring department is responsible to communicate this information to all affected employees so that they refrain from any action that may defeat the LOTO status. A tag-out device is defined as a prominent warning device, such as a tag and a means of attachment which can be securely fastened to an energy isolating device in accordance with an established procedure to indicate that the energy isolating device and the equipment being controlled may not be operated until the tag-out device is removed. Tags are essentially warning devices affixed to energy isolating devices and do not provide the physical restraint on those devices that is provided by a lock. 
It differs from a lockout device in that it is not as robust since it does not involve a lock. Tagout devices can be used in lieu of lockout devices only in very limited situations, generally only when an energy isolation device is not capable of being locked out. Like lockout devices, tagout devices must also be personal, unique or distinct and durable. They must identify the person placing them by name. They must not be used for a purpose other than controlling hazardous energy sources and they must be standardized, print and format. When a tag is attached to an energy isolating means, it is not to be removed without authorization of the authorized person responsible for it and it is never to be bypassed, ignored or otherwise defeated. Tag out devices including their means of attachment shall be substantial enough to prevent inadvertent or accidental removal. Tag out device attachment shall be having the general design and basic characteristics of being at least equivalent to a one-piece all environment tolerant nylon cable tie. Tag out device attributes and placement requirements include the following. Tags must warn against hazardous condition if the machine is energized and offer clear instructions such as do not start, do not open, do not close, do not energize or do not operate. Tags and their means of attachment must be substantial. The tag should be made of materials that are durable enough to withstand the environmental conditions encountered in the workplace. Tag attachments used to attach the tag must be non-reusable, self-locking and non-releasable with a minimum company locking strength of 50 pounds. Tags must be attachable by hand and the device for attaching the tag should be a one-piece nylon cable tie or its equivalent. Tags must be securely attached to energy isolating devices so that they cannot be inadvertently or accidentally detached during use. Where a tag cannot be affixed directly to the energy isolating device, the tag must be located as close as safely possible to the isolation device in a position that will be immediately obvious to anyone attempting to operate the isolating device. Tag out devices must be affixed in such a manner to clearly indicate that operation or movement of the energy isolating device from the safe or off position is prohibited. As with lockout devices, tag out devices are to be removed only by the person placing them and are never to be bypassed, ignored or otherwise defeated. When only a tag out device is used, an equivalent level of safety to a lockout device must be achieved. This is generally accomplished by supplemental safety measures such as removal of an isolating circuit element, blocking of a controlling switch, opening of an extra disconnecting device, removal of a valve, handle, etc. In some cases, it may be necessary to temporarily re-energize a machine or equipment that is under LOTO for the purpose of testing, troubleshooting or positioning the machinery or equipment or one of its components prior to completing service or maintenance or repair. In these situations, an inspection must be conducted prior to temporarily removing the LOTO device. It must be confirmed that the machinery or equipment has been cleared of tools and unnecessary materials. Machinery or equipment components are operationally intact and employees have been positioned safely. Following temporary energization and testing or positioning, de-energize all systems and reapply energy control measures in the order previously described. Under no circumstances should any part of an employee's body be exposed to a hazardous area of the machine or equipment, that is, point of operation or ingoing nip point area, while the machine is temporarily running or energized. Appropriate supplemental safeguards must be used, that is, personal protective equipment to protect against hot surfaces, use of a tarp or tarps to shield a hot surface or surfaces, or ingoing or nip point or points, safe work positioning, etc.
minor tool changes and adjustments and other minor servicing activities which take place during normal production operations are not subject to LOTO standards provided all of the following criteria are met. The activity is routine. It is performed as a part of a regular and prescribed course of action or procedure and is performed in accordance with established practices or industry standards. The activity is repetitive. It is repeated regularly as part of the production process or cycle. The activity is integral to the use of the equipment for production. That is, the activity must be essential to the production process. The activity is conducted with effective production mode safeguards in place. The activity does not require extensive disassembly of the machinery or equipment. The activity is performed using alternative measures, tools or guarding which provide effective employee protection. The LOTO procedural requirements do not apply if the machinery or equipment is completely de-energized simply by unplugging it and the cord or plug remains under the control of the person conducting the service or repair. If the equipment or machine is not unplugged, if the cord or plug does not remain under the exclusive and immediate control of the person conducting the repair or service, or if the equipment has multiple energy sources, then the LOTO standard applies and all procedural steps must be followed. The cord or plug must be locked out to prevent energization of the equipment. Pneumatic tools may also fall into this category, provided that they can be completely isolated from their energy source and bled of stored energy. Let us now learn the application of LOTO devices. Lockout or tagout devices shall be affixed to each energy isolating device by authorized employees. Lockout devices where used shall be affixed in a manner to that will hold the energy isolating devices in a safe or off position. Tagout devices where used shall be affixed in such a manner as will clearly indicate that the operation or movement of energy isolating devices from the safe or off position is prohibited. Where tagout devices are used with energy isolating devices designed with the capability of being locked, the tag attachment shall be fastened at the same point at which the lock would have been attached. Where a tag cannot be affixed directly to the energy isolating device, the tag shall be located as closely as safely possible to the device, in a position that will immediately obvious to anyone attempting to operate the device. Each lockout or tagout device shall be removed from each energy isolating device by the employee who applied the device. When the authorized employee who applied the lockout or tagout device is not available to remove it, that device may be removed under the direction of the employer provided that specific procedures and training for such removal have been developed, documented and incorporated into the employer's energy control program. The employer shall demonstrate that the specific procedure provides equivalent safety to the removal of the device by the authorized employee who applied it. The specific procedure shall include at least the following elements. Verification by the employer that the authorized employee who applied the device is not at the facility. Making all reasonable efforts to contact the authorized employee to inform him or her that his or her lockout or tagout device has been removed. And ensuring that the authorized employee has this knowledge before he or she resumes work at that facility. Congratulations! You have now completed this e-module on Lockout Tagout Part 1. In this e-module, you learned the following. Introduction to Lockout Tagout. What is hazardous energy? Harmful effects of hazardous energy. What is Lockout Tagout, that is L-O-T-O? -O? Need for L-O-T-O. Training on L-O-T-O procedures. Lockout policy. General procedures and precautions. Tag out. Temporary energization. Minor servicing.